3139. Coast to coast, direct from Austin. You're listening to the Alex Jones Broadcasting Network. Big Brother, mainstream media, government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Welcome to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight. I'll be your host today, and we have quite a show, a lot of news, a big Supreme Court decision that people have been waiting for quite some time, the Hobby Lobby decision. And of course, this is a test of boundaries. Where does Obama's imperial dictates, where do they begin? Where do the Congress's dictates begin? And where do religious freedoms end? Well, in this particular case, we had a narrow Supreme Court decision, five to four, that ruled in favor of closely held corporations being able to have religious freedom, not to have those mandates mandated on them. Well, what about the rest of us? What about the rest of us who are being forced to buy policies that in many cases are far more than we need? For example, young men being forced to get maternity policies when they are single, that type of thing. Of course, this is a bill that was written by the insurance companies uh, for the insurance companies profits uh, it's been changed at will by obama and they tried to destroy this company uh, levying 1.3 million dollar a day fines on them i mean that's even more than hillary clinton makes in a speech you know that's about five times what she makes in a speech so that's a lot of money because she makes a, a lot of money with her speeches but don't think that religious freedom is breaking out all over the place because we've got uh, the military banning bibles while they're forcing soldiers in bahrain to adhere to ramadan rules also on the news we've got uh, calls in congress for refugee status for central american kids and this is not just obama and democrats calling for this this is people like john mccain because this is an opportunity for them to exercise control. Understand that they're using children to take down the border, just like they use children to take down your individual rights to keep and bear arms, just like they use children for everything that they want to do. And of course, they create a crisis, but they say it's not a crisis, it's an opportunity. Pelosi was at the border this uh, last Saturday in Texas. She was giving a speech. She said that the border breach is an opportunity to serve God's children. Well, then why all the animosity if they're God's children? And, of course, they are. Why is there all this animosity towards people who don't want to kill them through abortion? Do you see the inherent confl conflictions there? And, of course, we've got a story up on InfoWars right now. Uh, FU, Left-wingers want to burn down Hobby Lobby after a SCOTUS win. Certainly, they don't see uh, children as a gift from God created in his image, deserving of respect and dignity. Well, where is Nancy Pelosi when children are being fondled by the TSA in airports? What about their respect and dignity? Uh, well, that's a different case, isn't it? Because that's against uh, American citizens. That's not against illegal aliens. And then we have uh, not only Pelosi seeing this as an opportunity, we also have a new House Majority Leader, the guy who replaced Eric Cantor. He's talking about the border security. He says, let's get the border secure, then we can legalize everybody. Okay, that's an opportunity to him. He, said, he calls it an opportunity. He says, we have an opportunity to negotiate for the legalization of illegal immigrants. See, the problem with all this is, of course, they are deserving of respect, just as Americans should be deserving of respect. But Pelosi made an interesting comment when she said, I would just love to bring all of them home with me. Well, why doesn't she? Well, because there's practical limitations of how many she can care for. There are practical limitations as to how many children I can take care of, how many children I can adopt, how many children you can adopt. And, of course, the government enforces those regulations if we start to go through adoption. We're not allowed to bring in 100 kids into our homes. We don't have homes large enough. We don't have incomes large enough for that. And we can't, as a society, 
bring in all of the children from Central and South America. Now, we've got special reports coming up. We've got a report coming up at the bottom of the hour with Alex Jones, and he's going to break down where all of this started. You know, it's Homeland Security that is cracking down on Americans inside the border and opening up the borders. Where did Homeland Security start? Ah, 9-11. And he's got Charlie Sheen's 20 Minutes with the President, special report at the bottom of the hour. Don't miss that. And we have Dr. Stan Monteith is going to join us. I began to get into iodine a few years ago because it was helping me and my family so much get healthy and detoxify. Most people know that iodine deficiency has been a crisis around the world. Iodine is key to so many of the body's functions, especially the thyroid. I discovered a product being developed by Dr. Group. You now know it as Survival Shield True Nascent Iodine that your body can really absorb. Then, about a year ago, he said, listen, if you think this is powerful, I'm going to come out with rare earth, deep earth crystals. And the results that I personally have had have been life-changing. Nobody else has got iodine based on these pure crystals, ladies and gentlemen. This is innovating, and the best part is it helps fund InfoWars.com, the radio show, the TV show, the whole media operation promoting true libertarian ideas. For a limited time, experience the ancient power of Survival Shield X2. Take advantage of this unprecedented 30% off Super Detox Special at InfoWarsLife.com. I've always believed in nutrition and herbs. Super Male Vitality was developed to activate your body's own natural processes instead of using synthetic chemicals sourced from powerful organic herbs harvested around the planet and then concentrated for maximum potency. I just received my Male Vitality about three days ago, and I must say that is good stuff. After consulting top doctors, nutritionists, pharmacists, and others, we have developed what I believe is the ultimate non-GMO organic super male vitality formula. Super Male Vitality by InfoWars Life is so powerful that I only take half the recommended dose. I jump out of bed ready to fight these criminals every day. I look forward to waking up and taking my Super Male Vitality and getting the day started. It's not just the Super Male Vitality. All the products at InfoWarsLife.com are simply amazing. Visit InfoWarsLife.com today to secure your Super Male Vitality and other powerful products from InfoWars Life. General, what do you think about the FBI saying that there's a terror alert on Monday about a potential Fort Hood situation? The police are shoving people, shoving Alex, shoving the crowd. Here we go, folks. I'm being assaulted. Whether it's the radio show, the news websites, documentary films, or the nightly news, InfoWars is the tip of the spear. Is this another false flag stage attack to take our civil liberties and put more homeland security while sticking their hands down on the pants on the streets? It's up to us to set brush fires in the minds of men and women everywhere. And that's what PrisonPlanet.tv is designed to do. If you watch, the Assad regime is going to be blamed or accused of using chemical weapons against the so-called rebels. What we see now is a war against reality. It's a war against the truth. It's more vital than ever that supporters of freedom become members of PrisonPlanet.tv and share their membership with up to 11 friends and family. Visit InfoWarsNews.com today. Become a member, share your membership, and help take the InfoWar to the next level. To an InfoWars.com frontline report. It's Alex Jones. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight on this Monday, June 30th, 2014 edition of the Alex Jones Radio Show. Alex will be joining us at the bottom of the hour. He has a special report on Charlie Sheen engaging Obama about 9 11. And of course, that is the key to what's going on right now in this country. The institution that was created in the aftermath of 9-11, Homeland Security, is what is pushing the police state, the security state, the surveillance state within our borders, the harassment, the violation of our freedom and dignity while they stand down at the border. Same, same group at both the border and internally. This is all Homeland Security. Homeland Security is in charge of the borders as well as these agents that are harassing us. Very important uh, report to see. And of course, there's a report up on Infowars.com. This should end the TSA, the hypocrisy of what's happening at the borders versus what they're doing at airports, bus stations, train stations, and on roadblocks. Now, we had a 
major Supreme Court decision come out today that people have been waiting for for quite some time, and that is whether or not a couple of closely held businesses who have religious objections to the Obamacare mandates, whether or not they should be allowed to exercise those uh, exemptions on, on religious con uh, conscience. And they tried to find them $1.3 million per day. That was the Obama administration's response to that. While Obama carves out exceptions at will to his friends, delays things, cancels things, rewrites Obamacare at will, they were going to try to shut down Hobby Lobby with $1.3 million per day fines. Now, of course, it's Hobby Lobby and another small business. A Well, Hobby Lobby is not a small business, but it's closely held. It's a family business. It's not a publicly held corporation. It's a corporation just in the sense of its uh, tax effects, essentially a small, closely held corporation. And a small Mennonite-owned cabinet maker called Conestoga Wood Specialties took this to the Supreme Court. You know, if we would all fight for our rights like these people did, we could stand these people down. I mean, they were either going to, they put everything on the line, just like the founding fathers. They said they pledge their lives or honor their fortunes on establishing their rights. And I really admire them for taking this fight all the way to the Supreme Court, not caving in. If they'd lost, they would have lost their businesses, of course. Now, it's interesting, I think, to look at the response, uh, the reaction to the Supreme Court decision from people like uh, Justice Ginsburg, and also to look at what people are saying on Twitter, the hate, the profanity that's going on with Twitter, people calling for Hobby Lobby to be burned down. We have that article up at Infowars.com. But let's look at what the Supreme Court justice uh, Justices Kagan and Ginsburg have said. Now, Kagan says, Congress has made a judgment and Congress has given a statutory entitlement. Okay, so just obey it. And then Ginsburg says, uh, this is a decision of startling breath. Corporations could opt out of any law that is incompatible with their sincerely held religious beliefs. What is it? about the Constitution that they don't get. When the Constitution says that when it comes to free speech and the free exercise of religion, it's not just about privately holding your beliefs in the closet. It's about exercising and acting on those beliefs freely. And what is it about the fact that the First Amendment says Congress shall make no law? If Congress makes a law abridging free speech, abridging your religious convictions, your exercise of your religious convictions, that law should be ignored by juries, by Supreme Courts, by everyone. It should be challenged. She goes on to say, Congress enacted the Religious Freedom Restoration Act to serve a far less radical purpose and mindful of the havoc the court's judgment can introduce, I dissent. Yeah, you see, you don't come up with a Freedom of Restoration Act which guts the First Amendment. See, it's not restoring anything. It's infringing on our rights when they do something like that. The First Amendment is supposed to be radical. The Second Amendment is supposed to be radical. The Fourth, the Fifth, the Sixth, they're all supposed to be radical. It's a radical idea that we have rights that we possess as human beings that the government can't take away. And those were put there specifically to protect individual rights. That's a radical idea. And we're not going to see it chipped away, infringed little by little. Now, what's it really going to mean? Well, Independent Women's Forum had some interesting observations about this. They pointed out that roughly 85% of group plans right now include contraceptive coverage. And that was the case before the mandate. So they're not going to go away for most people. They also said 99% of sexually active women in the U.S. have used contraception, so it's not going to go away either. You've got 85% of the plans that had it before the mandate, and if somebody thinks that that's an important benefit that they want, they can choose to work for those 85% of the companies. And then they also point out that there's a fallacy to the argument that if something is not mandatory, it will cease to exist. I remember when I grew up that we had these sayings, right? You don't hear them too much anymore. You're going to make a federal case out of that? There ought to be a law. We also had another saying that was, it's a free country, isn't it? Well, you know, we've been saying that there ought to be a law for everything. 
And we've been making a federal case out of everything for so long that I don't hear anybody saying it's a free country anymore. We inherently know that it's not a free country. And that's the reason why. Because we've let them gut our individual rights. And we need to stop that. Now, just in case you think that religious freedom is